I need to make a circuit board for my Nerf gun ammo counter. And to do that, I was going to use the Tono transfer technique. So I just did a YouTube search to see if there's new ways of doing it, and several came up. So I'm going to test the top four plus one of my own to see which one's the best. So I haven't done a lot of testing on each of these methods. I just got the bits and pieces that were required in the video, and the, in the show notes will be a link to every single um, source video for that particular method. And those guys have probably done lots of testing and got it down pat. I wasn't successful for some of these, so uh, maybe check their video, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. And we'll kick off with the OG Toner Transfer Technique. So we'll start off the original version of the Toner Transfer Technique. If you're not sure what it's about, basically you just print your toner onto some shiny paper like magazine pages, stick that down on top of your copper clad board and then apply heat. So all toner needs to transfer is heat and pressure, so if we apply enough heat and pressure the um, toner should apply to the board. So left it on there for a couple of minutes and once that's done you want to drop it on some water and the water dissolves the paper and then you should be able to just rub off the paper and leave the toner behind but for me this didn't really work this time so I either didn't have enough pressure or enough heat or enough time for it to transfer across and that board ended up being a bit of a fail but if you do it enough times you might be able to get the timings right but for me that wouldn't be much use at all. Next up we use the backing of vinyl wrap and I had some of this left over because I just recently did a project with a uh, console machine which had vinyl wrap so I had plenty of backing paper hanging around. So you just print the same job onto the shiny side of the vinyl paper or the vinyl backing and again apply heat according to the video I followed you need to leave it on there with pressure for two minutes. So once that had all finished I went and tried to peel the backing off to see what kind of result we had and it ended up being pretty good actually. I just transferred all the toner across onto the copper and a few pieces left you could easily fix it up with a marker pen. The only thing wrong was there was a crease in the paper and this crease transferred into a crease line on the board so if you're going to use the backing paper make sure it's nice and smooth. Next up is the cocktail of acetone and alcohol. This is just a mix of, co of uh, alcohol and acetone so check the guy's original video to see what the mix is supposed to be and what acetone does is it makes the breaks down the toner and makes it go sticky and what we're hoping for is the toner on the sheet to sort of melt I guess without heat and transfer onto the board. You put your print on top of the chemical let it sit for 10 seconds and then apply pressure. I have quite a big board here so I just used clamp for quite a while to try and push it across or transfer it across. Remove the clamps and had a look and again with this process you've just got to drop it in water to try and soften up the paper before peeling it off. You leave it in the water for 10 seconds according to the video and then I started peeling it off. This one wasn't much success really, not much transfer turner transferred at all. As you can see it's quite a big bit there which didn't get moved. I'm not sure if the, I can't really blame heat this time. Maybe there wasn't enough pressure so I thought I'll do it again because you know the theory is good. So in my next attempt I used uh, 20 kgs of weight on top of the board. I figured that should be enough pressure to transfer the toner across but a pretty similar result. Slightly better but still not really usable. Next up was the spray paint technique. So this is a pretty genius idea if you get it to work. You just need to make sure that your spray paint has acetone in it. You spray a light coating of paint on your copper board. Put your vinyl backed print on top of that and then hold it down so it doesn't move and then just rub across all the tracks to try and push them across. So this is sort of the same theory as the acetone cocktail one. It's acetone sort of breaks down the toner and um, and transfers it across so I peeled it off and there's still some toner left on there so I gave it some more rubbing around those areas and again we soften up the paper with some water. And then came to pulling it off and straight away it uh, looks like it just I think this is probably the best transfer out of all the YouTube methods I found as far as transferring toner goes anyway you can see just about everything's come off. So here's where things um, kind of turn to custard. So you've got a layer of toner and that's sitting on a layer of paint. And of course the etchant isn't going to go through the paint so you've got to try and remove the paint without removing the toner. And if you had like a lot of toner on your board this process would probably work but I've got to use alcohol on this paint which is not really cured anyway and just sort of try and dab the paint off. And some of these tracks go down to 0.1 millimeters and you've got to try and avoid the alcohol getting in contact with the board through the toner otherwise it just removes the toner and the paint and unfortunately that's what not happened here I just no matter what I can do 
it was just removing the toner and the paint at the same time. If you check the guy's video, you can see he's got quite thick toner on his boards and it worked perfectly, but for this test board, it was no good. Next up was my version. Just recently, I was doing the toner transfer technique for 3D printing and I found it was pretty good for using transfers, so I thought I'll try the same thing here. So I printed off my circuit board, applied heat and pressure for a few minutes and make sure it was all well transferred and the magic trick for this process is as soon as you've finished heating it put it in your fridge and then when it comes to peeling off it is definitely transferred everything behind there's only just a couple little dots where it hasn't transferred but as far as the toner transfer technique this is probably the best one so far you don't need to wash anything in water it's just heat and pressure to transfer it across you can just see there's a few bits and pieces where it's not transferred and I think they're just sort of steam holes in my iron. So if we've got an iron with a flat face, it'll probably work perfectly. Okay, so that's all the tests done. Um, maybe you use one of these processes and works flawlessly for you every time. I usually use the first process in this video and it, it always works, but I can't, couldn't get it to work at all. And it's just by chance I had the OHPs with me for a recent project and I could get it to work uh, for this video. But in saying that, I've tried on a completely different board and it won't, they won't transfer at all. So there's so many variables involved here, like how your printer wants to print on the day. I know working on printers for 20 years that one getting the same thing out of the machine two days in a row is zero. How, how clean the board is, there's all these and heat and the pressure, there's so many different things. I suggest if you want to do turn transfer, you pick one of these methods and then just fine tune it. So you know the exact times and for everything exact quantities and then you'll probably get a pretty reliable process. As usual I have a blog post on my website so check the links down below for that which goes over a few more details including the test file that I used. It was quite a hard one so perhaps it was destined for failure to start with. But aside from that, thanks for watching.